Now let me come to a hot potato. Let me come to a hot red potato, which is governors, link pin, or agents of center. If there is any office that has been controversial in India since independence, it has been the office of the governor. Let's make no bones about this. And let me add my second caveat at the beginning itself. No political party which has come to power at the center, no political party which has come to power at the center has not misused the provisions of article of the governor's office. Every political party that has come to power at the center has misused the governor's office. Now, two, three points. No doubt, governor's office is a relic of our colonial past. Most of the provisions relating to the governor's office and his appointment powers, all that, are taken from the Art Act of uh, 1935. Three points. If you read the Constituent Assembly debates, there were three points on governor's office. One, who should be made governor? Who should be made governor? There is the very antiseptic provisions in the constitution on that and lakhs of people can become governor based on that qualification age citizen all that stuff but if you read the debates of the constituent assembly jawaharlal nehru and ambedkar make this point at different places governors will be eminent persons as far as possible not from the field of politics. And even if they are from the field of politics, they would have retired from politics long back. This is what Nehru and Ambedkar say in the Constant Assembly. This has been followed in its breach. A study that I did of governors from 19... 50 to 2019, I did a study for that entire 69-year period, showed that 80% of those who have been appointed as governors were former politicians. Not just they were former politicians, certain governors went back to politics after becoming governors. If you look at today's Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, there are many former governors in both the houses. So, this logic that governorship should be for eminent people who have nothing to do with politics as far as possible has been breached very badly. Point number two. Governor is appointed by the President of India, as you know, on the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers. Again, Nehru says very categorically in the Constituent Assembly that we will consult the Chief Minister before appointing a governor. And to be fair to Jawaharlal Nehru, they did that in the initial years. Later on, uh, especially when Mrs. Gandhi became the Prime Minister, that process stopped. Now, the critic of Nehru would say, when Nehru was prime minister, you had more or less one party domination across the country. So it did not make a difference who became governor. By the time Indira Gandhi became competitive, party politics had started and therefore the office of governor was used to manipulate positive things. So, uh, once different parties started coming to power at the center in the state, what happened was, the center started appointing politicians as governors, especially in those states where your party was not in power. If you, I have done this study. 
very conscious and this is not now right from the 1960s and all political parties appoint governors in those states which are rival parties in power you specifically appoint a governor who will do your bidding so if you look at when upa was in power and you look at now when nda is in power you will see that trend in both the governments appointing hand picking governors for states where a rival party is in power which brings me to the third point i think our constitution makers were not very clear on what is the role of the governor because i have seen nehru's and ambedkar statements they say different things at different times at one place they say he is a bridge between the center and the states another place they say he is a representative of the center in the states now he can't be both he can either be a bridge between the center and the states or he can be the rep or she can be the representative of the center in the state today we have used another word instead of a representative we said he has become an agent of the center in the state so i think there is also a lack of clarity on what was the role the governor was required to play ideally somebody who protects the constitution and does not take political sides uh if you see what some of our governors have been saying and how governors play a role in deciding who should form the government you see the very 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 partisan approach of governors and you are seeing it today but this is not new this has happened in the past also all misuse of article 356 in the past was thanks to the role that governors played today there is a reduced misuse of article 356 thanks to supreme court bombay judgment and secondly uh, i think given the given the fear that the supreme court has now said that we can reverse article 356 in a particular state see in the bombay judgment they said that uh, uh, we can reverse the pro uh, process the governor's report has to be a speaking document earlier to that the supreme court said we cannot challenge the evidence on the basis of which the governor recommends article 356 now today that has changed so uh, if article 356 is not being misused today i think there are two factors one the supreme court judgment and two i think the fear of the judiciary uh, in ruling parties that you cannot really uh, play trant on this and try to uh, misuse the power but then there is no shadow of doubt in my mind that governor's office has become a major friction point between the center and the states uh, i would close the discussion on governor with that and if anybody has a question please feel free to raise the question prashant starting with you sir um, i know it would be very hypothetical what do you think is a viable solution how do we actually address this issue who will bell the cat see some people say abolish the office of the governor i think by abolishing the office of the governor you are throwing the baby away with the bathwater in a parliamentary system of government like we have in india i think you need a authority constitutional authority at the state level uh, which is in some way similar to the president at the national level having said that i will categorically say like again some people have said the president at the center the governor in a state is like the president at the center sorry no president is elected governor is appointed this makes a huge world of difference secondly the president is the first citizen of india the highest authority whereas above the governor there is an authority at the center so governor in a state is not like the president of india uh as i said given the parliamentary system i would believe you require a constitutional authority at the state level i think if both the promises that nehru and ambedkar had made in the constituent assembly are entered into the constitution document maybe part of our challenge will be solved one uh 
making sure that governors are those who have not been involved in politics and two making sure that the states are consulted before appointing governors i remember an instance when uh, morarji desai was the chief minister of the bombay state and a governor had to be appointed for bombay and uh, nehru sent a list of names to morarji desai and said please whom would you like to tick in this and what desai did is he cancelled all the names and then nehru said okay you prepare a list yourself you tick one name and send it to me we will appoint that person as governor in another instance when governor and chief minister of a state fought with each other both took their complaint to nehru governor took the complaint saying change the chief minister chief minister took the complaint saying change the governor nehru called the governor and said look chief minister is elected by the people i have sent you so you come back we will send somebody else as governor in the state because i want harmony between the two positions now again a critic of nehru would say both governor and chief minister were congressmen so it didn't really make a difference for him nehru did not uh, was not prime minister during days of competitive party system uh, but i think so i think somewhere leadership will have to rise above politics and bring in this change i know for those in power it is too tempting not to misuse the position uh shri tejas says would securing a five year term removal only through impeachment strengthen now maybe they just but then remember what happens if you get a bad egg as governor then you have no way of removing him and the damage that he or she could cause is much worse so uh, giving a fixed term with only an impeachment provision uh, as i said what happens if you make a wrong appointment and you have to face the consequences of that wrong appointment